We are back for another episode, or basically this week's version of the tier list. And this time, we're doing it Marvel's MCU movies and TV shows. And that's pretty much it. So anything like Daredevil, I would say X-Men, not included. However, stuff like She-Hulk, uh, Echo, and all those shows, I believe, are attached to this tier list. So let's get started. In no particular order, we're going to get this uh, underway. So Civil War. Basically, some people might say it's Avengers 2.5. But I, I love this movie. Like, it's absolutely incredible. They did it. Every hero gets a special scene. Uh, it's the introduction to Spider-Man, introduction to Black Panther, and what great castings, especially, and we've, like, just what great castings those two were. So let's put Civil War into A tier. I, uh, just for the record, just S tier wise, it has to be, I, for me, S tiers are my favorites. Like, that's pretty much it. Avengers. At the time, Avengers 1 is a good movie. And at the time, it, it's just a good movie for 2012. However, compared to the other Avengers movies, it kind of falls off just a tiny bit. The CGI kind of is like outdated a bit. You can really tell. But overall, it's still a good movie. Good introduction as Loki as a good true main villain to the Avengers. Um, next is Age of Ultron. I'm a sucker for Age of Ultron. I think it's a lot better than people give it credit for. However, it does have its shortcomings. But I consider this better than the original Avengers. But not as good as Civil War. And also, for each rank, it is going to be in the order, too. Okay, so just for the record. So Infinity War, there's, like, no argument. Infinity War, and I might as well just put Endgame up there, too. Basically, these two movies together are incredible. Probably a beautiful if you want to kill five hours, maybe six hours to your day, you watch those two movies. And I, I don't know what to say. Like that one year of waiting while it was going to happen was probably truly special. Guardians. Guardians is a very good movie. The very the first Guardians is a good movie. I'm going to put Guardians into A tier. That has the fact what they did with no name characters for non comic book readers. Made them look, made you love them, uh, made them memorable, memeable, and emotional at some points. Like, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Volume 2 is okay. I wouldn't say it's as good as the first one by far. Second one is pretty good still on its own, but I wouldn't consider it better than the first two Avengers movies. It does have its faults. It has its strengths, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to shit on a good, like, solid B movie. It is a good movie to watch, and I could probably rewatch it anytime. It's just, just one of those things where it's, it's not my favorite. The first Ant Man. It's it's okay. It has its very funny moments, but what they did with Quantum Medium kind of made this movie a bit worse in itself. But on itself, Ant-Man 1 is a pretty good movie. But it's just, it's not like top tier. Like C tier, I consider them average movies. They're like, they're generic. They're formulaic, like formulaic. But there is nothing like of substance for them. Ant-Man and the Wasp, I think it's honestly just a worse movie than Ant-Man. Like, it's not much to say. It's a worse version of the first Ant-Man. Simple as that. Uh, Doctor Strange, I would say <sighs> my girlfriend loves Doctor Strange and she would put it into S tier. I have, I don't know, I have fond memories of watching it. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Like, it really depends on the time. I would consider it better than Guardians. Better than the first Avengers, but I still think it's just I 
Age of Ultron just has that. I don't know. Just the humor in Age of Ultron makes me laugh oh, oh, constantly. And oh, it's just such a good movie. Doctor Strange uh, has its moments too. And but at the same point, it's just not there. It's not there compared to Age of Ultron in my heart. But I would say it's definitely better than the first Avengers movie. First Iron Man movie, the Kickstarter at all. That's A tier. Strong A tier. Uh, the CGI still holds up for today. Like you rewatch that and you like you say to yourself, this was made in 2008. Like this looks better than most modern MCU movies. Like it's incredible. And like there's not much to say. Like I saw this one on my like my birthday in 2008 with my friends. And I can, all I can say is this this movie kickstarted the MCU and for good reason. It's an incredible movie. We wouldn't have any of these movies without this one in particular. So I can understand why some people would put it into S tier as like maybe the most memorable, but movie on itself, strong, super strong, like super above ever strong. Be definitely better than Age of Ultron. I would, I would definitely say I like Age of Ultron better, but Iron Man, I think itself is just a better movie and more compact in itself. And so it makes it even stronger. That's uh, a stronger movie, even though I maybe I prefer watching Avengers Age of Ultron more. Yeah. Homecoming. When I f the first two watches of Homecoming, I did not like mostly because I'm a huge fan of the er the first five Spider-Man movies. And even the Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3, I have guilty pleasures like. I quite enjoy them, even though they're not that good, but. Homecoming itself had disappointing marks, but I did recent like in the past year I started rewatching all three of the new Spider Mans. They're good movies. I would say Homecoming is a strong. I would say it's just below Doctor Strange, but it is. I think it's better better than the first Avengers. But yeah, I I would say it's probably a mid bit B tier movie around that eighty percent seventy percent area. Definitely, definitely better than the first Avengers and volume, volume two for Guardians. Uh, far, far from home. This movie gets overheated a little too much for my liking. It's still a good movie. It is still strong. I re, I li recently rewatched it, and I gotta say, hmm. Um, I'm gonna say it's just below the first Homecoming movie. It's not garbage by by far. Like. Anybody calls says this movie's garbage, like it, they're trying to be edgy, they're just trying to be cool. But I, I, I just, it's a fun movie. It's above average. It's still a very strong movie. Uh, Far from Home. I am gonna say this is probably a A tier movie. It took the cliffhanger from Far from uh Far from Home. Oh, sorry, uh, Far from Home, and No Way Home just knocked it out of the park. Um, nope, uh, No Way Home obviously. Everybody's seen it. If you're watching this tier list, uh, dedications to or a dedication to the first two Spider Mans. Hmm. I'm probably gonna put them. Um, I'll put it ahead of Guardians. Is it better than Civil War? Yeah, I think it might be a better movie than Civil War. I think it's a top of A tier. It's not quite S tier level, but I will say it's quite up there. Now, I believe this is the very first Black Panther. Um, for it for itself, it's a great movie. Um, uh, it's not my favorite. It's still quite a good movie. I think it's probably I would say it's a I think it's an average movie for me. It's not my favorite. There is some things that bug me about it, but I'm gonna put it I'm gonna I think I'm gonna put it at the top of C tier. I, it's not a movie that I can't like. I think it's just I've s seen it way too many times. I think because my little brother loves that movie, and I get I get why. It's just I think the third act is a little messy for me. The third act is just not that enjoyable. The first two acts are really good. The first two acts put into beer tier. 
but the third act is just I think it's just a CGI mess kind of but I I think it's a C tier movie however I think Wakanda Forever is a much better movie um Captain Marvel uh unfortunately I did not like Captain Marvel at all it is a trash movie I've only watched it once I did not like it at all it's it's just so messy. Like I wanted to like it. I was looking forward to it. I'm a huge Brie Larson fan. When when it comes to her like previous acting, like in Twenty One Jump Street, The Room, oh uh, like she's an incredible actress. It's just it feels like she's just so wooden in this character, and like it's unfortunate because she's a great actress. Uh, Black Widow. Uh, it's it's better than Captain Marvel, I guess. But it's just not like it's not a good movie. Like this movie makes no sense of when it came out because Infinity War and Endgame already happened. But this movie takes place between Civil War and Infinity War. Like I know they had some like trouble reshoots with this movie. I get it, but it's still not a good movie. Any like I, like, I know there's some lovers of that movie. It's just, it's just didn't fit right with me like i just didn't like it i wanted to like it i was i was i was hoping for this movie to succeed it just didn't hit it for me shang chi um shang chi's good first time i watched it i would say it's a tier i think it probably moves down on a tier but i would say it is quite cgi heavy but i think that adds to the effect of the mysticism kind of and i think even though the cgi can be off-putting to some places i think it adds to the mysticism level of the movie so i think it's qu it's still quite a good movie uh the there is some things that i just don't like uh like trevor ironically enough and i'll keep it at that internals it's just a solid movie. I think it's an average movie. A lot of people hate this movie. I understand why. I consider it better than Ant Man. Probably worse than Black Panther, though. But it's. It's just an average movie. It doesn't. It's not top tier at all. It, I quite enjoy it. I could probably rewatch it a couple times. There are some boring parts. I get it. I get the criticisms for that. But I still think it's an enjoyable movie. Uh, WandaVision. I loved WandaVision. Uh, I would say at the bottom of A tier, WandaVision is very good. Some people criticize the final episode, but holy sh... Like, it, like, the very, like, the first six episodes are amazing. It takes side characters in other movies... Um, and make them actually really enjoyable and fleshes out their character even more. Like Darcy from the first two Thor movies. And she, like, I, I would say she's one of my favorite characters in the show, ironically enough. Uh, next, we go to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I quite like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think it gets overhated. Like, again, like, this is a good show. Has some strong themes to it. I know some people might be off put by the themes. It could be a little preachy sometimes, but I think the message is still strong there and it's a respectful message that it doesn't make you roll your eyes because it is a question of what would be the economic situation if half a civilization would snap away. And I think it did a pretty good job and it take like and it sends a right message, I think. Like just telling people in general to just be better, and I quite enjoy the message. Um, not to say that there's no faults to this show. I like anytime they add the uh, Wakandans when they popped up, that was incredible. Uh, Zemo again, incredible. Agent Thirteen, incredible. Like, there's not much to say. Maybe you could say the villain is a little weak, but. I quite like the contrary, like, I, li I like the difference between Zemo and the villains. I can't remember the, the Flag Smashers. I quite like the, 
the contrast between the two. And you kind of want to cheer for Zemo in that situation. And the reason why I love Zemo, not because of the dancing scene. Maybe the dancing scene itself makes it an A tier. That might be understandable. Iron Man 2. <sighs> Iron Man 2 is a D tier movie. It has its moments, but it has its really bad moments. It's it's messy. It is what modern day MCU movies are unfortunately uh, duplicating, where you're trying to set up things in the long term and it's just not working out. But what makes this movie even worse is because the first Iron Man was just so good. The, the second one just felt so bloated and stuff and it didn't let it breathe. But Again, it's, I consider it just a below average. Like, it's just not top tier M MCU type movies. Loki. Now, is Loki. Is there another Loki? Okay, okay. Uh, so I'll do Loki season one and two on this. Loki season one and two are very good. I would say I quite enjoyed season two a lot more than I thought I was going to. Season two ending really stuck good. Put you in the feels just a bit. I think the season for now, you could make the argument that you could actually skip the whole season of Loki and just watch the season finale and, and it still kind of makes sense. A little spoiler there. But still a good movie. A good TV show. Second season is quite good. I wouldn't say... Yeah, I would say at the bottom A tier. Um, just better than one division, but it is by a close margin. I just think because the second season landed pretty good. One season only has one season. Maybe one season might be boosted up depending on what Agatha does. But that's okay. Oh, uh, what if? I like what if. I would say What if is very entertaining. Hmm. I'll put a bottom of A tier. I quite enjoy them. They're they're different. Let's just say that. Obviously, we want to see what happens if the other side snapped away. Uh, what happens if the X Men were in the universe and fighting Thanos or something like that? Like, I get the criticisms for the show where you want to see this particular what if, but what they have shown, I quite enjoyed personally. And so I have no problem ranking that at the top of A tier or the bottom of A tier. It is very good. Hawkeye. Hawkeye in itself. Good. I would say it's pretty good. I think it's one of the weaker TV shows. I would say this is better internals. Definitely better than internals. But I wouldn't say it's better than Black Panther. But I quite enjoy Hawkeye is definitely one of my favorite uh, heroes in the MCU. Um, there's some iffy stuff with the show with the humor and stuff. I love the Christmas theme because it's kind of a diehard feel to it. Um, Kingpin, spoiler alert, appears up for the first time. He, he's really good. He's just. Vincent D'Onofrio is just on another level when it comes to MCU movies, or like when it comes to portraying the Kingpin. And I understand, like, you want to see what real acting is. You watch Daredevil and you watch just his acting in Hawkeye. And it takes like it literally his acting could literally take this move uh, TV show and bring it to B tier. But I want to keep it the C tier because the rest was okay. Moon Knight. I've only seen the series once. The ending, I did not like the ending at all. Oh, that was weird. I did not like the ending at all. So it kind of brought down the show to me just a bit more. It, it, like For the first like four episodes, like I was invested. I was like, this is so good. Like I would say Moon Knight at his best is probably better than Loki. The problem is that season finale... Maybe I just gotta rewatch it again. I did not like. I did not like the season finale at all. I love Oscar Isaac. Like, if we add into the Spider Verses into this in this series, 
I would say put them in S tier as well. Like a Moon Knight on itself. I just did the season finale just gave me the ick. Like I did not like it at all. Iron Man 3. Overhated. I would say it's a strong top of B tier. It is a good movie. It's a good movie. And the again, the Christmas theme is amazing. Uh, I believe it's Shane Black. Incredible. Definitely took the elements of Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and brought it over here as Iron Man 3. The plot twist of the Mandarin. I consider it kind of funny. The Mandarin, like Trevor it's himself, is off-putting a bit. I understand why. But that's okay. Uh, it's okay it's just everything else around it it's incredible I would say it's incredible um the incredible hulk uh D tier like it's not a good movie it's a it's more like a guilty pleasure movie probably to some people uh <laughs> it was so bad they had to change the hulk doctor which is kind of funny as hell and I understand why it's it's just it's not it's not it chief like there, there's a reason why they changed the um, actor for the Hulk movie after this. Uh, the first Thor movie, I would say the first Thor movie is probably I, I really enjoy quite enjoy it. I would consider it probably. Uh, just in the middle between the two Spider-Mans. Um, I love the Thor, like, Thor's, like, historical re relevance or, like, mythology relevance is in full force here. It's, I absolutely, absolutely enjoy it. And this, this movie is a guilty pleasure movie. I enjoy it probably more than most. It is a strong movie, I consider it. Introduces a very strong villain in Loki. I don't really have much complaints. I, I enjoy this movie constantly. Like, I can rewatch this anytime. There is some iffy parts, but like, like it is a little cringe when he gets his powers back. I get that. But it's a fun cringe, I would say. Don't hate. Uh, Thor The Dark World is not a good movie. Like, how, how do I explain this? Like, it's basically taking a B or B movie and turn making it worse. It's basically the it, the exact same situation happened with the first Iron Man movie. The first Iron Man movie was an A tier movie, and then it just regressed. Same with the dark. Same with Thor: The Dark World. Like it's like it's worse than these two movies. I could probably rewatch this maybe and maybe judge it a bit, bit more fairly, but like. Uh, I I have no urge to like I could rewatch these two movies probably maybe give a maybe a better grade potentially on the second viewing but like these three movies the first time I watched them I did not enjoy them at all I... okay this is probably the most controversial take right here Thor Ragnarok is the most overrated movie in the MCU I'm sorry but it's just an average movie like, I would say I'd, it has its funny parts. It's just Thor Ragnarok is just it's just so overhyped. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, I, I like, I'm OK with giving movies their fair shake, but like. It does have its moments like, but uh, like it's I, I sometimes it's boring to me. Like. It, it's just Thor Ragnarok is just. I don't I don't like it that much. Like it I think it's a bit overrated. And that's okay. Cause you know why? That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. You can't do much about it. Uh Captain America, the first Avenger. This is a guilty pleasure movie. I love World War II movies. I can I enjoy this mu just as much as the first Iron Man. And I I I I consider it a better movie than the first Iron Man, to be honest. There's not much more than say that this is just a guilty pleasure movie for me. Like I love World War II movies and just overcoming like just war movies in general. The setting, 
period piece and the transition of a man out of time or a man misplaced through time. And that's why I probably love the what if series of in reverse when it comes to Pe Peggy Carter. I quite enjoy that as well. So that's why probably the fact that I love the first Avengers so much. It's maybe a reason why that I can really enjoy what if as well. Winter Soldier just takes what you love, what I love in the first Avengers movie and makes it even better. It is in itself probably an S tier movie. It is incredible. Like, oh my God, the pacing is a spy thriller. You th truly think that, um, uh, let's see, uh, Nicholas, <laughs> Nicholas Cage, Nick Cage, no, Nick, Nick Fury literally died. The Winter Soldier, the Bucky Barnes plot twist. Like, this movie made me speechless when I first watched it. And I under this movie stands the test of time of why. And I can, you can see why the Russo brothers was given the next two Avengers movie in Civil War. That's how good uh, Winter Soldier is. Like, my God. Like, if you have not watched this movie or haven't watched it recently, rewatch this movie. It is enjoyable as hell. Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. I quite enjoy this movie. And I love how horror... I don't like horror movies to it, but it's my type of horror. Sorry. My type of horror movie. Sorry. Sorry, let's cut this out. Yeah. Next. Next is. Next is Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Basically, I enjoy this movie quite a bit. There is. It does have its faults, but the I'm not a big horror person, but the horror elements to this movie is incredible Um, for its rating. I would consider this movie better than Guardians. Not as good as Civil War, though, but it is a strong uh, runner up or like a sequel to the very first Doctor Strange movie. And it, it takes Wanda. Oh, it just makes for me love her more like. It's just incredible. Like there's a reason why. The, uh, uh, this movie gives me goosebumps every time I watch it because it is such a good movie. And the CGI at first, it was kind of off putting a bit when. OK, sorry. The CGI in theaters was incredible. Once you rewatch it on TV, the movie, the CGI is a bit off, but. I think that experience in the theaters really made me love it a lot more. And I still remember just being in awe in the theaters. Um, I would probably put this maybe an S plus tier, probably because of my theater experience. You could put No Way Home in S plus tier for movie experience too. But Multiverse of Madness, like, is a damn good movie. Does not deserve the hate it gets though. Miss Marvel. I quite enjoy Miss Marvel. I would hit as I probably enjoy it a lot more. I would say this is I would say I would say this is the top of B tier. Actually, no no. I don't think I like it as much as Age of Ultron. I I still consider it probably a good TV show. It has its moments, it has its charm. The problem is when it came to the Marvels, it, it, it diminished. It made the TV show a little bit worse. Kind of unfortunate. It's unfortunate because Miss Marvel in itself is a very not liked character. But I think they did a really good show, a really good job in this TV show of making it. I liked her quite a bit. I love my loved her personality in the show. Quite good. Very funny. The jokes. I enjoy the jokes. They were pretty funny to me. Um, but in herself, in herself, like she kind of ruined 
like she was kind of not ruined, but she was kind of like in the Marvel's movie. She was kind of annoying, which is unfortunate because, yeah, she is. She's described as a fan girl of the Avengers, especially Captain Marvel. Understandably why, but I would I like like it's tolerable in the first like in her first season of her show, but in the in the Marvel she just becomes unbearable, which is a it's disappointing because I would say even then like. Monica and her were probably the best parts of the Marvels. I quite like Monica and Miss Marvel quite a bit. Their characters themselves, but unfortunately, like that movie drags it down. So like, it makes this like it sucks because the TV show is good, but the movies like brings it back. It's kind of like the reverse effect when it comes to WandaVision and Doctor Strange. Wanda is inc- like she is a good character. Like I would put like Miss Marvel and the Wanda, Wanda Vision show are probably like, really good and maybe a one one two combo punch. The problem is the sequel movies that follow up with them, like Doctor Strange two, good. So uh, maybe it elevates Wanda Vision just a bit more. But Miss Marvel is a good sh- good classic teen bop like TV show. But the problem is the Marvels. The Marvels is not a good movie, which is unfortunate. So it just lowers the quality of the show just a bit. It's it kind of sucks. Like I like really hope they figure out how to solve the Marvel character, like the Captain Marvel characters, or the like. It's like I want to like them more. The problem is they're just not good movies, unfortunately. Thor: Love and Thunder. Thor Love and Thunder is not good. I don't like it. I have only watched it once. I. The problem with the Thor movies is sometimes I feel like Thor is just a little one dimensional in them. And Thor Love and Thunder, I think Christian Bale did an incredible job in the show. In, sorry, in the movie. It's just. It's just. How do I describe it? It's just the rest of the movie just didn't wasn't as good. It just didn't match up to Bale's performance. Christian Bale was incredible in the villain role. Like, no doubt. Fortunately, he becomes an unforgiv like unforgivable or unforgettable villain. And you barely remember his I barely I can't remember his name. I just know he's the god killer in the comics. But uh Like, I'm disappointed. I had high hopes for the fourth Thor movie because I did not like, I, I thought Thor Ragnarok was overrated. However, with the stuff with Thor going through Infinity War and Endgame and the fact that he left off with the Guardians, I was, I was really hoping it was going to be good. But they were just there for a montage. When space and going our one action sequence was disappointing. She Hulk. I. I don't know. A thing. I quite actually enjoy her, and herself. Like uh, I think it's. I think it's like Jennifer something. Uh, She Hulk cast. Uh, I quite. Jennifer Walters, Tatiana, I quite enjoy her. Uh, the problem is everything else with the show. Everything else with the show is just not good, unfortunately. How there's only two standout things for the show. Uh, like I'll try to give it a fair shake. Her, her herself, I I actually quite like her. I love her humor. It's kind of like me, kind of. It's kind of my. My sense of humor. Daredevil. Always incredible. Always from the watch. But, and then obviously Mark Ruffalo. She-Hulk. The show. I would say. It's kind of cringe. Especially, man, the season finale was not good. I love the twist. I, like, I kind of like the twist. And I kind of the fourth wall break. The problem is. 
has the opposite effect of maybe the Falcon Winter Soldier for me. The pre preaching message is kind of over the top a bit. But I get why they like it. Like, I can understand why people like it. I would say maybe it's a top of D tier, bottom of C tier. But I think Jennifer Walters in herself is a fun character. I can't wait. Actually, I can't wait to see her again in other future Marvel shows. I quite like her. Daredevil, obviously. But, like, it's it's just the writing. Some points of the writing. And the season finale kind of, f f kind of like fell flat on itself. So uh, next is a werewolf by night. I actually have never seen it. I should. I heard it's incredible. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't know what else to say, but I have only I haven't seen it. I've seen trailers of it. I heard I should watch it in black and white, then watch it in color. But all in all, I heard it's a good, really good show. Now here comes Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever is the unfortunate circumstance of Chadwick Boseman dying, rest in peace, dying like just prior before like filming the movie, and they had to do a recast and reshoot of it. However, didn't take away from my enjoyment of the movie. I quite enjoy Black Panther 2. Yes. There is some things about it that's very not okay, I guess, for some people. It is a very sad movie. The I would the acting, I would say it's probably better than most movies in the MCU. I don't, this might be a hot take. I consider Wakanda Forever probably one of the best Marvel movies ever made. You, it is one of those Marvel movies where, unlike others. You could probably just see it one, and uh, or sorry, see it multiple time, and enjoy it on repeat. Well, kind of forever is not one of those movies where you want to watch constantly on repeat because it is a very sad movie. Holiday special, nah, I'll do the holiday special. Like it's fun. Don't know what else to say. It's okay. Uh, Ant Man Quantum Medium. Yeah, it's worse than the Wasp. No, no, I want to say it's worse than Wasp, better than Wasp, but like, well, they did it with Modak though, made it like brutal. Oh my god, what they did with Modoc. Oh my my I'm just speechless sometimes. There's not more more to say. Like there could be a new test like a new tier. I might I just add a new tier. Just saying what the fuck happened? What the fuck? This is this is Quantum Manium in a nutshell. Um they, like I don't even want to talk about this movie. Like, I there's a reason why this movie gets hate. The performance of Kang is actually I, I consider Kang a pretty good villain. The problem is he's not an Avenger level villain. If he loses the Ant Man in its first appearance. The only redeemable factor about this movie and that they could have saved if they killed off Scott Lang. Like, if they kill off Ant-Man, yeah. Yeah, that, that then, then this movie could be C-tier. But holy sh... Like, choice after choice. But, I don't know. Like, it's, it's disappointing. Okay, so just to recap, uh, this is them in particular order. I would probably say this is probably the tier list that most people will see. I quite enjoy it. Um, I would say maybe I could put if there's any adjustments I would make to make this line more fleshed out, 
maybe I can put this at the t maybe just raise it a bit higher. And Civil War, actually. I'm, okay, I'll put Civil War as well up top. Okay. The problem is, I consider these f top five movies probably the five best in the franchise. The problem is, it's just like, just what the f like? I I just can't get over Ant Man and Quantumanium. Like, oh my god, like there's nothing nothing to the actresses or the actors, just. The decisions they made for this movie are head scratchers. Like whoever designed Modoc or whoever had the idea for Modoc needs to be fired immediately. Hey, it's one of those decisions that if I came up with a decision like this at work and I would be fired. And honestly, I would take that and <laughs> probably quit the industry because I would not bring anything good. Like, oh my God. Just, it's just a nightmare. But on the bright side, for most of these movies, I would say anything, anything below C, or anything above C, I would say C the S tier. I can watch this shit on replay. Like I quite enjoy a lot of these movies and TV shows, and I have no problem with rewatching them again. Uh, she Hulk might be the exception. I might not want to watch She Hulk again, but I'd still like probably prefer She Hulk with its sense of humor, the sense of Daredevil, over probably the re these uh, six MCU movies. And this is gonna be a hot take. Thor Ragnarok is the most overrated sh movie in all of the MCU. I'm sorry for MCU fans, but. It's just I would it's just not as good. It's over liked. It's overrated. Don't know else what to say. I'm just rambling now. Okay. Well that's it everybody. Thank you for coming out and watching basically me forty like just forty four minutes of me just ranting about the MCU and basically what I liked and what I don't like. But hope everybody had a wonderful time. And if I if somehow any of the creators of these movies watch this i'm not trying to shit on your craft at all like you probably do more than i can do for these six movies than anybody else it's just the problem is a lot of it is come becomes down to the creative direction of your directors and stuff like it, it's unfortunate like I want to like these movies. Like I have high hopes. Anytime I watch a Marvel mo movie or a Marvel TV show, I don't mind like messages of pre like when people become preachy and stuff. And like, there's a message like that's entertainment in itself. Like I have no problem with that. There's nothing wrong with a good strong message within media. The problem is sometimes just The message is okay. The quality of the movie is not good. So it makes the movie makes the message kind of unbearable. Where it's something like if you want to preach a good message, or a good message about being respectful, being acceptable, or having acceptance, make a good movie. And that good movie, people can't criticize a good movie with a good message. Right? But people can criticize bad movies even more when they have a good message and then because people want to be con like like counter counter to these opinions or something like that i don't know i'm just rambling now well, peace out everybody hopefully <laughs> everybody has a wonderful day